Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Casper the Boy Diviner and I have another walkthrough for you guys today. Today, I'll be covering the El Goliath Tarot deck, 2nd edition. Thank you so much to Goliath who sent me this deck free of charge. So basically, he is just giving, gifting this deck to me. So just wanted to let you guys know that I'll try my best to be authentic as possible. This deck was honestly outside my comfort zone in terms of price. This is why I didn't get it, but I always admired the art. Um, if you have watched my deck's production pet peeves uh, video, you'll notice that some of these are actually in this deck. I will talk about it. I also will talk about um, certain things that mitigate this, uh, these pet peeves of mine. Um, but mainly, this is sort of like the Mary L. I can tick a big box if the art is good. Um, I can take a big box if the book is good. So those were the reasons why I kind of forgave the Mary L and still kept the box in the book. And I feel the same for this deck right now at this point in time. Okay, so let's open the box. So you can see that the book is pretty big. And I have not read through it yet, but I flipped through it. So, you know, production pet peeves in a way, this deck it has a split deck, a uh, split box, which I really, really dislike. I really hope and wish that decks were not like this. Things that mitigate it is that at least these are not paper inserts. This is a very sturdy velvet. So if you press it, it is cushioned. That's a good thing about this because so when it travels overseas, when it goes through delivery, even if you bring this around, even if it's knocked around, it is soft and it will not break through. So what happened with the Mary L is that my original version came with all the paper inserts split or broken, you know? And he provides ribbons to actually pull out the book and the deck. And he also provided thumb cutouts, which are super handy, okay? So those are the things that really mitigate um, the box of this deck, which I have a lot of misgivings, of course, as usual, because it's a split deck. So I might get a bag for this deck because the cards are so beautiful. I really enjoy the art. Um, Goliath is also someone who really takes into account um, his users and his fans and people who buy his deck because this is, sec this is the second edition and I see a lot of changes from the first edition that I prefer. I didn't like the, the borders, I didn't like how huge the cards were in the first edition so that was, re it was really not something that I would have bought but when he came up with the second edition, th that was when I started feeling really attracted to it. At the same time, it seemed like shipping to Singapore was really expensive for some reason. I don't, I don't remember what or was it, um, it might be a mistake so if Goliath, if you're seeing this video, feel free to let me know. I'll update the description box below and I'll pin a comment if I said anything wrong here. Okay, but what I kind of wished um, production-wise could have changed is that this guidebook could be made normal. This could be the first two pages of the guidebook. Um, and these all will be cut in half so that this book would be cut in half. So basically it will be a, a thicker book left to right. So it will be twice of this thickness because we will be cutting in half. So it will be about this thick. But because you're cutting in half, you can put it with this deck. So the box itself will be very thick, but at least it's not... I don't have to store the deck split. So that, that is really my hope and wish for if he makes a third edition. That's what I really hope for. That's what I think would really improve the deck usage process. Because right now, I really dislike splitting decks. I have sold many, many split, split deck boxes. Not split deck boxes. I have sold decks that had split deck boxes, even though I like the art. Okay, um, in this case, this is a little different because this art is... I liked the art. I really, really like this one because the, this one not only gives me like comfort but also scares me. A lot of this um, deck scares me and let's go through it together uh, with the flip through. Okay, but the guy is nice. I don't like glossy paper but that's maybe uh, just me. I don't like glossy paper. I wish this was normal paper because it's black and white anyway. I wish this was all matte. And why I prefer matte paper is because I want to write on it. Glossy paper is really hard to write, write on. I'm left-handed so a lot of times when I write on glossy paper, things get smeared, things get smudged. So I kind of wish this was a normal paper and I wish this was cut in half so that it's a thicker book and flipping from left to right so it's easier to see, you know? So I like I can I can flip left to right. I don't know if that makes sense. Like this is half. So I can flip left to right. All the margins should be in the center. Uh yeah, that's that's my wish for this deck. That would have made my reading experience better. I Maybe I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy about flipping it up to down. I prefer it uh, left to right. Uh, I have not read through any of the intro. Maybe there are th I'm I'm sure Goliath has thoughts about why he made this deck this way. Uh, I'm confident in his creation process. I believe his artistic intention. But just because I'm used to it, I prefer a left to right book. And I prefer a book that was smaller, thicker, and has matte paper so I can write on. But um, these are all production things. Apart from that, 
Oh, the cards. Okay, let's go. Also, guys, the, the box. This is so beautiful. I really like this imagery. Okay, let's go into the deck. This deck has beautiful card stock. It is very matte. It has beautiful black gilding. So in the Marriott Owl black gilding, everything was stuck together. I never had problems with this deck. This is what I said. This is what I mean by I love decks when they come with a beautiful gilding that doesn't stick. If it sticks, I'd rather not have a gilding. I'd rather just, just not. The backings are so beautiful. A lemoniscuit, horns, antlers, and a moth. Honestly, moths are one of the biggest fears I have in this lifetime, along with butterflies. I really get freaked out by them. So this is what I mean. This that really elicits visceral reactions in me. Uh, it's more of a shamanic shadow deck. That's what I would call it when I look at this deck. I might be influenced by some of the marketing, I'm not sure, but this is really what I see when I see this deck. So let's go through it card by card. There are a lot of extra cards here, so let's go through it. And my first impressions of it, I have not let myself read the guidebook too in-depth. I flipped through it, but I don't want to be too influenced. I want to give you guys what I see, what I feel. Uh, yeah, and you guys can have a nice walkthrough and watch this. Okay. The Fool, the Eternal Vagabond. So I used to not enjoy the, the font, but it has grown on me. Uh, after I seen the second edition, how it's built, I enjoyed the font more than when I was looking at the first edition. And I also don't get bothered by the by the branding here. I just want to let you guys know there's a branding here because I know some people, when, when we did the Pet Peeves um, video, a lot of people commented that they hated um, having copyright things on the face of the cards. For me, it doesn't bother me that much when it's this small, so I'm fine with it. But I just wanted to point that out in case people are thinking of getting this deck and this might you know, potentially be a deal breaker for some reason. Okay, I really enjoy how the eyes are closed. Beautiful. I really like the idea of the rat being the, the fool. To be honest, why? It's because in the Chinese zodiac, there is a story about how the rat arrived first in the race of being like the first animal of the years, you know? We, we start off with the rat year. So that has a nice like synchronicity. When I see the rat as a fool, I think about that. The magician. Some people don't. I, I enjoy this kind of um, imagery and I really am curious about this. To let you guys know, so the, because of the black building, some of the white borders has a bit of like a shadow, but that doesn't bother me. That adds to the whole mystique of this deck because I, it is like meant to be used as a shadow deck. I love the pipe, I love the smoke. I wonder how he did that because it's so beautiful. The lemoniscuit is all endowed in his antlers, in his headdress, the alchemical master. The high priestess, beautiful. I'm just trying to remember what the, uh, the breed of this cat is, but it's the, the hairless one, which is honestly a bit creepy for me. But I really enjoy this cat as the High Priestess, the Crescent Moon Cat. The Empress. I, I, so this is one of the art that I keep telling you, like, it is beautiful. I, I find it beautiful, but it also horrifies me a bit. There's something about the X-ray nature to this uh, card. You know, the alchemical mother, the seeing the fetus in that belly. Yeah, there's something about like the skeleton. The emperor is also creepy to me in a very strange way. He, he I feel like he, this is not an accessible uh, emperor. He's the ruling father, so he maybe is more distant. And I see that in his face. Just to give you a warning, guys, I'm not good at animals, so I might mangle all these animals up, but I feel like these are vultures, and this is so creepy. Again, a very creepy hierophant, the master of keys, all the keys dangling down from the top. Teeth around his, maybe his neck. Beautiful, creepy, creepy art. The lovers, I really like this card. Flamingos as the lovers, I think, um... I'm trying to remember who else used flamingos, but I really like the heart. I like the, um, the pearls, the, the alchemical heart, the chariot. Justice, I really like this card. The olive branch, I think, doves of equality. The hermit. So they are sort of following the Thoth numbering here because it's Justice first as number 8. The Hermit, the Inner Master, I like this one. The Wheel of Fortune. 
strength. This is iconic. This is iconic. This is one of the, the images that stuck with me when I was looking through uh, the El Goliath walkthroughs. The Hanged Man. I'm not good with chakras, but I know this is a, a chakra symbol. Suspended Monkey. Death. The Metamorphic mo Moth. Yeah, I, I'm scared of moths. They really scare me, but this is the moth on the back with the same antlers. One of my favorite cards in this deck. Yin and Yang symbol, very Chinese. The beautiful koi, very Chinese. Temperance, the pond of balance. The devil. This card might give me nightmares. I really, really enjoy this image. It's so visceral, guys. This deck is so visceral, and that's why I, I, I really do identify as a shadow deck, and I'm not really... I always want to dive deep, deeper into my shadow, but sometimes it is so difficult to sit down and actually make time for it because it's not something uh, enjoyable. The tower, another favorite card. I really like the tears in the, the the birds. They are really crying out, and I think this is so relatable because there has been forest fires all over the world in twenty twenty. I feel this. The star, beautiful. A tree trunk. Cosmic Guide. The Moon, simple, beautiful. I really enjoy this. The Silver Shadow reflection, Reflector. The Sun, the Beams of Life. This is cute. This is very cute. Judgment, the Transcendence. I'm very interested to read this because this process of judgment looks so much more painful than most. But judgment is painful, right? Um, when you're opening your eyes up to new things. Uh, the world, the sacred circle. Beautiful. This is very beautiful. Don't know if this is a net. I don't think so. I really like the aces in this deck also. Ace of Cups. The Two of Cups. This is very traditional and I love the tradition. I love the catechus. I think this is called the catechus. Um, love the two cups. Love the snakes. The snakes are coming out from the catechus, I think, which is awesome. This card is one of my favorite cards. I feel like this graphic, stark, flat color is so rare in this deck. It really brings this card out. I really enjoy the Three of Cups, the Trinity Triangle. The Four of Cups is so cute. This is so cute. I love it. The Four of Cups, the Wandering Mind. Another favorite card. Uh, this is a desert. You can see the Five of Cups, the Spilt Regret. And all the water has been spilled in this desert, this dry, dry desert. And you're looking for, you know, cups that have some water in it. This looks like it has some wine left or something. Another very cute one, and I really enjoy this one. The Six of Cups, the reuniting water hole. Love the lotuses, love the birds on the hippos. The Seven of Cups, the Tentacles of Illusion. The Eight of Cups, the high door. Um, this is one that I don't like super resonate with. I really like the high door. I like this idea of moving forward. I don't like the cups being strewn all over. I feel like in the Eight of Cups, there is a purpose to what you were doing, but you have to give it up to move forwards. You know, there is a sense of giving up. Here, there's a sense of maybe destroying something you've built before you move on or something has been ruined for you, so you had to move on. No, I like the idea of something's going well, but you have to abandon it for something better, you know? But um, I, I can still read it that way, you know, nothing in this card is stopping me from doing that. I just, I just wish the cups were standing or something. The Nine of Cups. The Contented pe Pelican. There's something with the Pelican, right? Where they sacrifice themselves to feed their children, something like that. A myth. Ten of Cups. The Joyous Sky. So cute. I my friend has the biggest tier of whales, so I guess, you know, we, we all have, will find peers in this deck. I love this card. The whales look so joyful. So here, he always he goes through the king, queen, knight, then page. So here, the king of cups, the chief eagle. I don't see an eagle as a king of cups, but I'm very interested to read why. The queen of cups, the mother of crystals, I do see uh, this has that gentle nature. The knight of cups, I love this. The brother of the wild. You can see the, the ancestors. His ancestors coming out from his breath. Page of Cups. Beautiful adornments on his face. I really like the texture of the cardstock, by the way. Page of Cups. The Sister of Roses. Ace of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. 
The juggling snake, the lemon scat with the pentacles, beautiful. The three of pentacles, the three wise masters. I think this might come a bit from Judeo-Christian uh, tradition, I'm not too sure. Um, but this is a bit creepy for me. The four of pentacles, the prudent mountain goat. Not only is, is this prudent, there is also uh, isolation here that I think captures really well the essence of the card. That kind of uh, isolation has been missed in like the RWS, but I really see it here and I really enjoy that. The Five of Pentacles, Hardship Mountain. Beautiful card, really hard to see. Really hard to see this emaciated horses and all the birds just swarming around waiting, waiting for the death to happen. This is so visceral and scary, you know. Six of Pentacles, the Sacred White Scale Bowl. I don't know if this comes from a uh, Native American or Aboriginal uh, tradition, I'm not sure. Beautiful. Set of, Seven of Pentacles, the Rewarded Frog. I really like this card. This is very Seven of Pentacles. The waiting, the waiting to get that opportunity, waiting for the fruition of something. The Eight of Pentacles, the Patient Weaver. So all the hard work going to the web. The Nine of Pentacles, I love how he draws a lotus. I really enjoy that. It's, it's a sacred plant for, um, you know, Buddhism. The Tranquil Spotted Doe, sniffing the lotus. Ten of Pentacles, the Oyster of Metatron. Beautiful. I love the oyster shell. King of Pentacles, the Father of Roses. So like, tigers are not traditionally what I think of when I think about pentacles, but this surprisingly works, I think because of all the endowments. Queen of Pentacles, the Indian Henna Mother. The Knight of Pentacles, the Aztec Hawk Warrior. I think it takes a lot from different religions and different traditions, it seems. The Page of Pentacles, the Butterfly Snow Vixen. Ace of Wands, I love the tentacle. So detailed. He's so good. He's such a good artist. The Two of Wands. The Lightning Struck Antenna. Three of Wands. The Creative Bone Prism. So something more abstract like these, I don't, I don't really connect with as well. That's on me. The Four of Wands. The Beaming Vessel. I really like this one. The Five of Pentic- uh, The Five- Sorry. Oh my god. The Four of Wands. The Five of Wands, The Jagged Union. I need to know what this is. I need to research. I need to read the book. Because again, this is a bit too um, abstract, a bit too uh, focused for me. The Six of Wands, The, the El Goliath Hive. Oh, I love this. The Beast as the Six of Wands. That's so interesting. Beast as the Six of Wands. People usually use bees for Eight of Pentacles. So I really appreciate this interpretation here. The Seven of Wands, The Determined Order. I really like this one. Something about fighting against, you know, um, the environment, fighting against man-made stuff, you know, he's trying his best. The Eight of Wands, the Meteor Shower, this is perfect for this deck. The Nine of Wands, the Darkness Before Dawn, I like this one also. A bit abstract, but it's very clear where it's coming from, you know, with the whole defending until light comes. They are zombies here, you know, we are fighting for that. The Ten of Wands, the Overburdened Beetle. There's something about the, the crown of thorns that I think about when I see this um, image. The King of Wands, the glowing white stag. The Queen of Wands, the cosmic huntress. What a beautiful owl. The Knight of Wands, one of my favorite court cards in this deck. The hind-hearted moose, so cute. Even though I have not seen a moose in real life and I think I did, I think I'll freak out. Page of Wands, the moonscape messenger. Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. This is one of the creepiest cards in this deck that really freaks me out. I don't know how to see this. The Blind Seal. I think the candles that represent how, you know, there's uh, still intuition and foresight even though you're blindfolded, but it still freaks me out. The Three of Swords. The Bleeding War Heart. You can see how the, the Swords has pierced through the glass that encases it. The Four of Swords. The Sacred Space. The Five of Swords. The White Scorpion versus the Black Scorpion. This makes me think of David and Goliath, and it's quite interesting because it's called El Goliath deck, right? The 
The Six of Swords, a brand new journey. I really like this one. Um, there are storms up ahead. There are some um, fires behind you. You're carrying your eggs and you're moving forward to your nest. This is such a card of trepidation. Part of me feels, just feels a bit sad because it feels a bit dark. Um, it's Shadow Deck, right? <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that, oh, this is too dark. What I like about the Six of Swords is that there's something in the distance that you're looking forward to. Here in the distance, there are only more storms and this feels, this feels like a very weary journey. The Seven of Swords, the Thief in the Night. The Eight of Swords, the Imprisoned Bear. Poor Bear. Well, one of my favorite cards in this deck, the Nine of Swords. The Overwhelmed Sea Turtle. Seems like a tsunami behind. I love, I love the swords here. I love how small the turtle is. This is one of my favorite uh, Nine of Swords cards. Ten of Swords, the Barren Desert. The King of Swords, the Father of the Night. Queen of Swords, the Baroque Queen. The Knight of Swords, the Hooded Brother. See all the little weasels around him. I don't know how to interpret this. Then Page of Swords, the Sword Bearing Sister. Okay, I think we're done with like the, the regular tarot deck. I think. Yeah, we went through all the, the suits. These are the extras. Okay, one of my favorite imagery from this deck. Karmic Release. The car Sacred Karmic Deer. The Sacred Heart. The Heart and Soul of Goliath. The Shedding Snake. The Shedding Snake is the Expansion. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm not going to try because um, I need to do research before I pronounce this. But the Shadow Dream Catcher. The Caution. I like the Caution because this reminds us that fear is not always fighting against us. Fear can also help us guide our lives. Nature, the seed of life. The sacred fire, the rebirthing bonfire. I really like this one. The karmic soul tribe, the family. So I feel like these cards might actually be more like um, spread cards. Like you, you put it down to focus your spread. Uh, but before I go too deep into that, let's finish. <laughs> let's finish. I'm, I'm, I'm so hasty. I'm sorry, guys. The hidden inner strength, the shadow cat. Masks, the hidden wolf, the personas we put on. The Shadow Self, the Dark Inner Swamp. I think this is an art card, but I need to check it out more. The Shaman, the Medicine heal Healer. The Starseed, the Demiurge. I feel like I don't have a great impression of Starseed just because of how they've been portrayed or how they portray themselves or a lot of the ones on social media. The Sage, the Purity. And then a Yes card and a No card. I don't think I'll be using the these two cards. I'm still thinking how I want to incorporate this into the deck. I do feel like just shuffling it in because I feel like they work. They mostly work by themselves. I will not use the art card. But everything else, I feel like it could work with the, with the deck. So size-wise, it's a little larger than a normal deck. Let's look at a normal deck. This is the Trifoni uh, De La Luna. I keep pronouncing this wrongly in all. Triumphy. I keep saying Trifoni, right? Triumphy De La Luna. So this is quite a standard size. And this is only slightly larger. I do enjoy this Algolive size a lot. I've really consecrated the deck so the deck is ready for readings. Um, I'm going to place these aside and I'm going to start shuffling and then let's see how it shuffles. Okay, it shuffles beautifully. Uh, I really like this cardstock. It is a matte cardstock. I don't like glossy cardstock and it's really smooth. Uh, the, the gilding doesn't stick it up so that's perfect. Hmm, I do enjoy shuffling this deck. Let's see if it shuffles well. Um, if it river shuffles well. Okay, let's split the deck up and then let's... Okay, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, let's do a quick test reading for everyone. Clearly, I didn't shuffle enough, I, I think. The 
Two of Wands, Ace of Wands, and then the Page of Pentacles. Taking a step out, you can have new inspiration that will lead to new business and new opportunities, okay? So just step out a bit of your comfort zone. There's no need to take a huge step. Just take a look out to get the inspiration that will bring you forward. Okay, I hope this reading helped. I hope this whole um, walkthrough was interesting to you guys. Let me know what you think about this deck. More than happy to discuss. More than happy to, to let you know more. Uh, there is a link in the description box to, to this deck where you can get it on Amazon or elsewhere. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Thank you so much again, Goliath, for sending this deck to me. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope you take everything I said here, you know, okay. <laughs> Um, feel free to correct me if I said anything wrong about the production of the deck and I'll be more than happy to discuss, okay? You guys have a great rest of the day. You take care. Bye!